Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzie and welcome back to another video for EVE Online. In today's video we're going to be taking another look at the Guristus Pirates Mumba, the brand new pirate faction destroyer added to the game recently um, as part of the Zarzak event. I took this out for a spin recently in an Abyssal Dead Space, or rather several Abyssal Dead Spaces, just to push the ship to its limits, and I did a video showcasing how I lost this vessel, talking about what I enjoyed and what I thought worked and what didn't. Now, I think there were some misunderstandings with how I make my content in that, which I completely get. A lot of the folks who are watching that video are fairly new to my content, and I probably didn't explain my intentions quite properly first time around. So in this video, what I'm going to do is talk about what I was actually trying to achieve in the previous video, why certain mistakes were purposefully made, and then we're going to talk about how I have since updated the Mumba to make it an even better, more potent vessel. We'll then spend a brief bit of time talking about where I think the Mumba will actually sit when it properly launches into EVE Online in November's Havoc update. And we'll talk more about what I mean about that in just a moment as well. Now, if you do enjoy this video, please let me know, hit like, drop a comment down below. Both really help. They basically teach YouTube that people are engaging with my content. Therefore, it's good content to recommend to new people. By commenting and liking, you help promote my channel to other players like you and hopefully help me connect to people who like this kind of content. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel financially, you can do so by heading to my Patreon page, my PayPal tip jar or my Redbubble merchandise store. Lastly, if you head into the description of this video, there are two links that may be able to help you as well. First of all, a referral link. Click on that and you can earn yourself 1 million free skill points. You don't need to have a new account. You can do this onto an old existing account. In fact, I had someone message me that they had a day one EVE Online account that they had recently got back into. And by using the referral link, they'd still earned 1 million free skill points because it was the first referral link that they had used. Finally, whilst you're down there, join the Catskull Community Discord. That's how you join Catskull Cartel in-game, and it's how you can get in contact with the Catskull Community, a bunch of very friendly folks who want to talk about all things EVE Online and space gaming in general. Anyway, with all that said and done, then let's jump right back into talking about the Guristus Pirates faction destroyer, the Mumba. First of all then, let's just address some of the concerns that people raised during the previous Mumba video. If you haven't watched that, I will put a link to it in the description down below. Head across, give it a little look-see. If you're just here for the updates as to how I've altered the fit and how I'm now using the Mumba, there will be timestamps down below as well that you can skip this section if you're not interested in it. But I thought it was worth just spending a brief moment of time for those of you who are fairly new to me and my content to explain what my intention with that video actually was and why certain decisions were made. Now, for those of you who don't know, a lot of people sometimes look at me as if I'm trying to basically teach people how to play EVE Online to the fullest capability. That's not me. I'm not here to say, this is the fit you should be using, go, you know, copy this, off you go, have fun. That's not my intention. I don't want to give you a perfect fit, even if I had the capabilities of actually supplying you with one. Because that's not what Captain Benzie does. In the words of Otto Mechanic, my content is all about Ahoy there, I'm Captain Benzie, I'm having fun, here's how you can too. So it's a much more organic process than that. It's a case of I wanted to do the thing, I tried to do the thing, here's how it went. And therefore the fits are always meant just as a starting point, a place for you to sort of see what I was doing and how I got it to work. And I do actively encourage anyone who's watching my videos to play around with those fits. Do not accept it as gospel truth. I am not the greatest EVE Online player by a long stretch. In fact, another running theme with my videos is that I screw up so that you don't have to. I lose my ships so that you don't have to. And I do tend to fly my ships completely sub-optimally. I can fly every single subcap in the game at this point. So I don't tend to sit down with one ship and completely focus on it. Therefore, I forget things like optimal ranges, tracking bonuses, that kind of thing. Recent Cinnable video, people were sitting there saying, well, you were having tracking issues. Why didn't you swap from hail to something that doesn't have a tracking penalty? Now, despite auto cannons being one of my favorite weapon systems in the game, I'd completely forgotten that hail has a tracking penalty. That's 
who I am. That's how I fly. But you know what? If I can make something work, if I, the idiot on screen, can make it work, then someone who is a better pilot, or just at least a bit more aware of the vessel that they're actually piloting, they're going to be able to do a better job, right? And so that's kind of what I do content-wise. I'm happy to fly it like an idiot and still make it work. Because if I can fly it like an idiot and it works, then anyone who's better than I am is going to make it work better. And so that's what I was doing with the Mumba. A lot of people picked up on the fact that I was using Firestorms. So like, you're using a shield ship in Firestorms. Are you just an idiot who saw the thermal resistance drop and know that the Mumba has a thermal resistance increase, therefore that's why you were doing Firestorms? Well, yes, to a certain degree. I knew that Firestorms were going to be one of the toughest Abyssal Dead Spaces to run in a ship like the Mumba. So that's why I did it. I wanted to push the ship and get it to its limits, see what we could do. And if a Mumba can run T2 Firestorms, it means it's going to be able to run Tech 2 other types even easier. I did mention exotics and gammas throughout that run as well, and both of those, the Mumba does even better than Firestorms. A lot of people didn't pick up on that though, so perhaps I should have explained that a bit clearer. Finally as well, it's worth just mentioning that yes, I went into that fully aware that I was going to be losing a very expensive ship. That is how progress is made in EVE. You don't make progress by never undocking something risky. Now I was fortunate that I have enough disposable income and people like Burning Souls in my community who are willing to throw expensive ships at me just to see what I do with them. So yeah, I get it, there was a lot of, and I don't want to like make this a big thing but a lot of what came across as jealousy of people go oh i wish i had the, the the isk to throw away like this yeah i get that a lot of people wish they had that isk. i'm privileged i'm fortunate that i can literally buy an 8 billion isk ship throw it into a ridiculous situation and then just laugh when it explodes i fuck up so that you don't have to that is the entire point here right so I've sat there with the Mamba, pushing it through all of this content, trying to see what it could do. Now I'm comfortable to come back and actually give a better fit, although still not a perfect one. I'm sure there are people out there who can tell me that there's stuff here that could be done better, and I'm fine with that. It gives me the opportunity to make a new video later on. But I have a fit that I'm a bit more comfortable with, and a list of content that I think the Mamba is going to do better at, plus a discussion on actually where the Mamba should sit in the meta, in inverted commas, as far as Abyssal Dead Spaces go. So, you know what? Let's move into that, shall we? So one of the most caustic comments that I got from people was that, oh my god, you're active tanking a passive ship. Yeah, it's almost like you can fit different ships in different ways just to try things, right? And I'm not particularly fond of passive tanking. If you've watched my video on things like the Healer and the Drake, you'll know that I find it a little bit boring. But you know what? Point made. If you think the Mumba should be passive tanked, then that was something to have a look into. And I've played around with it a bit. And yes, a passive tank does actually work really, really well. Arguably better than an active tank does. Remember as well, I also active tank my worm when I'm running electrical abyssal dead spaces, so that's kind of where I came from. I started sort of looking at the worm and then how can I modify this into a destroyer sized fit. Well, what I have on screen now, which will be linked in the description, is a passive shield tank fit for the Mumba that absolutely excels at running both kinetic, uh, sorry, uh, both exotic and gamma abyssal dead spaces, and it will do tech twos actually really, really well. I ran a whole slew of tech two exotics and tech two gammas, and the Mumba does those really, really well. So where does the Mumba fit into the meta as far as abyssal dead spaces go? Well, not everyone wants to fly a healer. Yes, healer is the big main ship in abyssal dead spaces, but some people do find it boring or just don't want to go all the way up to cruiser skills. They want to fly destroyers. They've got other ships in the destroyer class that they specialize in and therefore it's where their skills lie and I completely resonate with that so that's where the mumba's going to come in there it's also 100% better than the worm the worm basically runs electrical abyssal dead spaces at calm at best tech one electrical abyssals and those are fairly expensive filaments right again 
if you want to improve your profit, then you run a ship that does cheaper filaments or higher tier ones. And the Mumba absolutely does that. It's not the healer that can go all the way up to tech six. It's not the healer that can do every single variety and flavor of Abyssal Dead Space, but it is still more than the worm. So if you've been flying a worm and enjoying T1 electricals, there's probably a T2 electrical fit you can run on the Mumba, and that probably would be one of the active tank fits that I had a look at. That said though, when it comes to Tech 2 exotics and gammas, the passive fit works really well. And they're also fairly cheap filaments because not a lot of people are running them, which means you can, there's usually a plethora of them on the market, fairly cheap that you can buy and go have fun with. So let's actually have a look at the fit itself and see what I've done here. Now this isn't directly ripped from any of the comments that were put on the previous video, but it is sort of inspired by them. We're going a passive shield tank fit. So we still have the same old light missile launcher twos in the high slots. I'm carrying Scourge Fury light missiles here, but again, swap these depending on what you're shooting at and which environment you're in. The, the basic rule of thumb is that if you're in something like a exotic that has a kinetic resistance drop, then you want to use kinetic missiles, except against very specific targets. If you're in something like an electrical, then you use your Mjolnir missiles, that kind of thing. So you swap your missiles to the situation as required, but I'm using light missile launchers with, with Fury light missiles for the most part. I've never seen the need to run anything more than the Furies. The 32 kilometer range is absolutely fine for these. Again, some of the battleships, again, something people picked up on before was me orbiting at extreme range with missiles against the battleships. I was doing that to try and sit in more of the fall off range than optimal. But again, a lot of people said, no, if you just spiral in, you can orbit at sort of like, you know, thousand kilometers and they just won't hit you and that's a great tip that is genuinely a great tip and i learned a lot from that but here we are light missile launcher 2 fury light missiles you can probably use kaldari navy in there as well if you really want to but i find the furies are high dps and good enough for what we need now because we're going a passive shield fit our mid slots here are all thuka shield uh, small shield extenders three of those here in the mid slots to push up our ehp I couldn't really fit any of the medium extenders in here, couldn't get those to work, so I've stuck with three small shield extenders. In the lows, I added a Dread Guristus shield flux coil to improve my shield recharge, and my rigs are all small core defense field purger twos. This gives us 61 HP per second. Again, you can probably tweak this to get that a little bit higher, but 61 HP per second I found was more than enough for running these sites to the fullest of my capability, but I would love to know how you would tweak this fit. It's all about that passive shield recharge. We literally have two buttons active here, fire missiles and micro warp drive, which by the way, I'm using a five magnetic quad lithium fluoride restrained micro warp drive. Again, some people are probably gonna tell you that a compact or something else might be better here, but I quite liked the restrained because it meant I could leave it on a little bit longer. And against those battleships, it allows you to approach without having quite as much signature radius bloom. That's my reasoning. But again, people will have different thoughts. The final low slot then is a C3X Heva Saitsuo Ballistic Control System. Again, for those of you who don't know, because some people said, you know, why using ballistic control systems rather than drone damage amplifiers? It's because this is a, a ballistic control system and a drone damage amplifier in one module. It just works better for Guristus ships. Point briefly there. I do wonder sometimes if some people just skip to the combat demonstration or watch my videos on mute because a lot of the questions and negative comments I sometimes get are literally answered in the video. Maybe I ramble too much. Maybe they just don't like listening to me. For your drones as well, be aware that obviously you can carry a whole load here of uh, different light drones. You can carry eight different light drones. And considering you're only capable of launching two at a time, this does give you a lot of versatility. I tend to carry obviously based on what uh, Abyssal Dead Space you're going into. So if you're going into exotics where kinetic is lower, then bring yourself some Hornet 2s. If you're going into uh, gammas where your explosive is lower, then bring warriors, that kind of thing. Play around with that and use whatever you need. Again, I am going to link this fit in the description down below so you can drop it into game and see how your skills work. You can drop it into Pypha, play around with that fit. Please do let me know if you think you found a better version of it. I will happily do a third Mumba video talking about how to optimize this even further. But for me, that's a pretty solid fit. We've got nearly 10,000 DHP, nearly 350 DPS, of which 150 is drones. So you can see we're actually getting more out of the missiles there than we are out of the drones. 
not quite the point that a lot of people were saying, oh, it's definitely a drone boat. It's like, no, it's very much a hybrid ship. So hence the Saitsuo rather than a drone damage amplifier. But there we go. It's, you know, it, it's neither here nor there. I would love to hear how people modify this. Anyway, let's actually showcase this in action. Hopefully you will forgive me flying it like an absolute nub cake. But again, that is kind of the point. Because if I can fly it like a nub cake and survive, then you can do so even better. If you want to use implants, I'm using a clean clone in the footage you're about to see. And I'm not using any boosters. So if you want to use boosters and implants, you're going to get even better results than I could. I reckon if you're a good enough abyssal pilot, you might even be able to push the mumbers into T3 solos. And as a destroyer with the double loot, that's pretty cool. And if you want to duo up, I'm almost certain this will do tech fives as a duo. Maybe even tech six if you're a very good pilot with good implants and excellent skills. But again, I will leave that for people better equipped than I am. So let's have a look at it actually in action. So here we are in an agitated exotic filament abyssal dead space. Now being exotic, it means we've got a reduction to the uh, to kinetic resistance. So I'm using scourge missiles and we have an increase to our lock time, our sensor strength. So yeah, that, that's neither really here nor there. But again, if you were to go into gammas here, you're going to be massively increasing your shield HP, which really helps with that passive tank. Anyway, first room we've got is a Edencom room. Edencom and Concord, depending. So we've got some pacifiers, um, skybreakers, and an, uh, a marshal in here as well. And you can see, yes, okay, we do take a bit of damage on the approach to these vessels. I've gone down below half shields, but we're holding. We are holding absolutely fine. We're now in range of everything. We're orbiting a little bit closer so we can hopefully, you know, actually get on with things a little bit better and not take quite as much damage. I turned the micro warp drive off for a brief moment here at range, um, only to realize that, yeah, actually, I am taking quite a bit of damage there. But no worries. Again, I fly like an idiot so that you don't have to. If you're a better pilot than I am and you know your kill priorities better than I do, if you know the tactics for taking out these ships better than I do, then yeah, you're going to do better than I do. So I kind of see that as a positive thing, right? I'm not saying I'm the best. I'm saying I'm an idiot and this still works. There goes the uh, the Disparu, the Skybreaker. Don't like those when you're in a drone ship because, the, yeah, they, they really hurt your drones. But there we go. And down goes the pacifier. Nice and easy first room there. And um, we're just going to loot that biocompetitive cache, get our stuff and move on to the next room. At this point, it's worth um, reloading all of your missiles. If you can, if you do need to, you know, get your shields up a little bit higher, don't worry too much about just hanging around a gate and making sure you survive. I know the idea of abyssals is to maximize how quickly you can run them so you can run as many as you can in quick succession. Thereby, thereby improving the amount of isk you make per hour of running them. That said, it's better to survive than not, right? So sometimes it's better, I feel, just to let your shields recharge that little bit, maybe hang around the gate, then jump through into the next room. <clears throat> Anyway, here we are in the second room. This is a Damovic room. Now, interestingly enough here, we do actually have a need to get rid of those anchorings because anchorings are going to turn off our micro warp drive and thus all of our movement speed. That said, I know the Drekovac is probably the bigger threat here. Uh, go, that's what I want to take out nice and quickly. So I'm going to put my drones on it, launch the missiles at it, and we're going to try and handle this as quickly as possible. I want to get nice and close to it to try and get under its guns. I know it's a uh, it's a battle cruiser, not a battleship, so it's not quite as simple as that. There we are. There's the scram. Bye bye micro warp drive. We are now basically a sitting duck for these vessels and we are going to take quite a bit of damage. I don't know if going after the Drekovac is the right thing at this point, if I'm being completely honest, but I'd rather get rid of the big scary battle cruiser and then work on the frigates afterwards. Unfortunately, that Drekovac does go down quite quickly. You'll see there we are. One more hit and boom, down she goes. Now we've just got a load of uh, anchoring Damoviks and a striking Damovic. Which one should I be going after? I would love to say it is the anchoring because, again, I want to be able to use that micro warp drive to move around a little bit because our sub, uh, sub velocity, our standard velocity is a little bit slow, but I'm open to thoughts and opinions on that one. 
for me, I, yeah, I'm still learning Abyssals, very much still learning Abyssals when it comes to things like kill priority. Annoyingly here, yes, my drones do split the DPS, and I know that's not a great place to be. You should really be trying to just hammer one of these out, especially since they are Triglavians, and Triglavians do spool up their DPS over time. Therefore, the faster you kill something, the lower its DPS gets. Although it is worth kind of having that conversation, because in my head, if you take two ships out slightly slower, then you've got two ships that reach, say, 70%, rather than taking out one before it reaches 50% and the second one reaches 100%. I don't know. I don't know the maths on this, right? But it is what it is. Either way, you'll see we survived this quite comfortably. Anchoring Damovic is about to go down. We've got one more Anchoring Damovic, and this is also why I love doing Abyssal Dead Spaces, even though I'm mainly a wormholer, because we complete those daily challenges. I had to kill eight Triglavians in the Abyss. I've just completed that one. I've still got to kill 12 Triglavians, but oh look, there's another one. So that's going to take me down to, uh, up, sorry, to nine out of 12, and hopefully we get some Drifters and Sleepers as well for all that. I do like farming Evermarks, like I know some people are really bored of them at this point, but I quite like Evermarks. I like being able to put my Corp logo um, onto all of the different ships I have, and I haven't quite got those for every single ship that I regularly fly. I would ultimately actually like to eventually get those for every ship that I ever fly, not just for content. I mean, ones that, you know, I do actually fly from time to time for fleet based stuff. Like, obviously, I fly a Vagabond a lot um, and things like that. So having uh, like, you know, there's uh, some ships that I use for PVE and PVP that I would like to have that on. And most of those I now have those logos on. But there's a lot more that I would still like to eventually. I don't know. Anyway, final room of this particular run, FEL test room, some Lancers, Entanglers. Yeah, I think Entanglers are probably going to be our primary target here. And uh, maybe the Lancers for damage. I'm not, again, I'm not overly clued up on this. I should probably go and watch some more of Ace Faces videos and get a proper understanding of the, uh, of the Abyss. But there we go. If I can fly it and I'm an idiot, then people who are better than me are going to do better. This I, I will keep saying this. I will keep saying this because it is something I genuinely believe. I don't mind flying subpar because if I'm flying subpar and I manage it successfully, then all I'm proving is that if you were to fly this competently, well, you're going to do better than I can. Yeah. Like, we got the orange cloud in the distance, and I know I don't need the orange cloud at this point. I'm quite happy to keep well away from that, and, you know, because that's going to make me a bigger target if I fly through it, and... Or is that the blue one? No, it's the blue one that increases your signature radius, isn't it? No, blue one increases your speed. No, white one increases your speed. White one increases your speed. Orange one increases your shield boost. That's the one... Um, whereas the blue one is then your uh, your signature radius. Either way, it's not important for this vessel and hitting these targets. We're quite comfortably taking those out there. Yay, more Paragon, 35,000. I think that's actually enough for the ones that I'm after now. Cool, I'll need to go and pick that up in a bit. Maybe I should do a Cantscot Academy video on uh, what Paragon's for and how it works, because a lot of people ask about those. Basically, just go to a Paragon station um, and you can buy yourself uh, corporation or alliance emblems for the ships that you fly to proudly display your allegiance. But anyway, you can see the shield has absolutely held fine through all of this. Um, and we've just got those two lancers to go down. And again, this is in an exotic firestorm. It should be worth noted that yes, absolutely, this can run T, uh, T2 exotics. It can absolutely run T2 gammas. I'm not gonna bother showcasing the gammas because they're even easier. The fact that your shield gets doubled is just great doesn't really affect all that many ships that you're up against. Most of the ships in the Abyss are armor tanked, and so you don't worry too much about them having double shields. But that additional uh, shield for you is huge because it increases your shield recharge speed um, and basically makes you very, very tanky indeed. So gammas are absolutely the way to go with this. Tech 2 gammas are the way to go. But I wanted to showcase that kinetics would, uh, sorry, exotics are also absolutely viable. Anyway, folks, that's everything from me for today. Please do let me know your thoughts and uh, opinions about the Mamba. If you think there's something I could be doing better here, yeah, let me know. I'd love to have those conversations with you all. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching right the way through to the end. Talk to you all in the comment section down below or on the Cat Skull Community Discord. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.